Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, and welcome to our latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about real-world applications of distributed ledger technology. My name is Zenobia Godstock, and I'm the SVP of Communications here at Swirls Labs, helping to grow the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am delighted to be joined by Rohit Sinha, who is a cryptographer here at Swirls Labs. Hi, Rohit. How are you? Good. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, excited to talk about uh, cryptography and quantum computing in general. Yes, absolutely. So I think there has been a lot of discussion about, you know, quantum computing and why it may break or um, affect the standards that we use today. Can you give um, our viewers a little bit of background on that and what the concerns are in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. So quantum computing, of course, people have been working on it for a long time. And uh, and recently, there's been a lot of breakthroughs. Uh, for example, Google a couple of years back, announced quantum supremacy. And of course, there was debate around that, uh, uh, what it really means to be, uh, whether they have really achieved quantum supremacy. But in general, there's been a lot of progress. People, uh, they're steadily building more and more impressive quantum computing. And it has lots of applications. Um, uh, there's ways in which quantum computing can speed up scientific computation across various different industries. Um, but on the other side, uh, because they're so good at uh, you know solving different math problems, it does pose a threat to cryptography. So as we may know, cryptography in its essence relies on the hardness of certain math problems. For example, factoring numbers into uh, into primes or or solving the discrete log problems. And and all of the cryptography that's been used all over the internet, including uh, you know various distributed ledgers. Uh, banking systems and so on, all of that cryptography does rely on these assumptions. And some of those assumptions are uh, challenged by increasingly sophisticated quantum uh, machines. So basically, these quantum machines can do calculations all the faster, which means that they could break the crypt cryptography faster. Is that super simple level? Exactly. So, uh, so le yeah, let's dive into that. So, uh, so uh, the... For a, quite a long time, uh, cryptographers have known about these attacks. So for one, uh, there's this Grover's attack or Grover's algorithm, which is basically a way for quantum computing to brute force through a, a large space of, of different, uh, different solutions. And that could be used to figure out the cryptography key being used to protect your system. For example, your signing key or the AES encryption key that's that you're using to encrypt the data, but there is a simple solution for that. Uh, you just use larger keys, and and so we haven't been super uh, concerned about uh, about that. We can we can, in fact at Hedera we're already uh, compliant with CNSA standard, which means uh, we use uh, SHA hashes of of large enough size, say 384 bits or 256 bit AES keys, which which protects us against the Grover's uh, attack. But in addition to that, there's another uh, algorithm in quantum computing called the Shor's algorithm, which, in fact, which is a little hard to defend against. Uh, Shor's algorithm can use, be used to factor uh, uh, numbers into their primes, or or solve the discrete log problem, which affects uh, uh, things like uh, public key encryption or, or signature schemes. And signatures are used all over the place in, in distributed ledgers. We we use signatures to authorize transactions, and that's one thing where uh, where quantum computing can uh, potentially uh, impact security. And for that reason, the the NIST announcement that we are going to be discussing today is of uh, importance. All right. So so we know we have an issue. Um, help our audience understand what is NIST and what have they been working towards. Yeah, so NIST is a standardizations body, and they have been uh, pushing standards of different uh, uh, in, in different industries for for uh, for several decades. 
especially in cryptography, we may uh, we may be uh, familiar with their massive effort on 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 hashing uh, standards and encryption standards. So uh, several years back, they they organized co- competitions for AES encryption, which is the de facto encryption algorithm used in industry. And their eff- effort several years back was very important uh, for for our industry. Um, so similarly, they have been interested in post quantum cryptography. Uh, encryption algorithms and signature algorithms that are safe against quantum uh, attacks. And they have uh, had a competition uh, for uh, allowing people to submit proposals for cryptographic schemes that are secure uh, against quantum computing. And uh, the the competition has been progressing in several rounds. And only recently, they have announced uh, uh, a few algorithms that they are pushing forward with standardization. All right. So, um, you know, competition can sound like a a light word, but um, it sounds like a tremendous amount of work has gone into this. And, you know, there's been a a pretty open process for um, sharing these algorithms. Uh, Yeah. Uh, So so the 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 general idea of doing this is to publish proposals in the open, have researchers, cryptography researchers all over look at them, analyze them, and see if they're potential attacks. And a lot of the algorithms, uh, you know, the first version of the competition had over 70 submissions, and a lot of them uh, were found to be broken. Uh, and that's good. That's what we want. We want everyone to look at it and figure out if it's safe. Or, uh, and, and over time, you know, people have understood, like, what are the mathematical assumptions each of them rely on, which ones are... Uh, more trustworthy, which ones uh, 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 can be attacked in, in ways. And and I think that process has been super healthy. And I think we are arriving at solutions, which of course, it's who knows, that may, people may find attacks in the future. But as of now, you know, they look like really good candidates. So as you you know, you've been following this, um, NIST made an announcement um, yep. a couple weeks ago. Can you share with us you know, what um, What they announced and what you think that means. Yeah, so they announced uh, four algorithms that they're pushing for standardization, one being a public key encryption scheme, uh, which is used to, uh, which is used to encrypt data and also can be used for key encapsulation mechanisms. Um, in addition to that, they proposed three candidate signature schemes. Now, signatures, of course, is... Uh, widely used in distributed ledgers to authorize transactions, and uh, and yeah, these three signature schemes, they they don't all rely on the same mathematical assumptions, which is good because we want that diversity. In, in case in case some uh, some are found to be vulnerable, there are others uh, that we can piggyback on. So it's important that they are pushing a, a, a diverse uh, pool of algorithms forward, and and that's important for us at Hedera because of course. Uh, so we, as I mentioned, we use cryptography in uh, these cryptographic algorithms. We we use signatures. So we are actively following the standardization process, um, and uh, you know so, uh, we are analyzing what uh, the trade offs, what it means for us, like how large are these signatures because we're going to be storing them on our ledger. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, if once uh, once the standardization becomes more mature. And the implementations become more mature. We can certainly adopt it in in our platform. And so you mentioned that there are multiple algorithms. Would you be using all of them, or do you, or is it going to? Do you think it's going to um, center around a single one? Well, so like NIST, we would want to be flexible. Uh, if if needed, we can transition from one to the other. Uh, if if the industry decides, you know, one is safer than the other, uh, but. But of course, uh, we're, we're going to have to make a decision on one of them going uh, at least to start with, uh, what it, whichever one means best for a ledger. Uh, for example, whichever one has the smallest signature size, because you know we don't want to be storing lots of data on our uh, on our nodes. Yeah, so it's it's going to be an interesting decision making process for sure. And how do you see, you know, I, I'm sure there is much more work to be done there. As you see, you know, this being applied to distributed ledgers. Um, you know, you've mentioned sort of analyzing it, um, testing it, start, starting to implement it. Um, what else do you see happening in this space in the next six to 12 months? Yeah, so I should mention that quantum computing is still uh, 
still in its very er uh, early stages. You know, the uh, to attack uh, the cryptography that we are using today uh, requires quantum computings with several thousands or even millions of qubits, uh, which is the the way you measure the strength of the quantum com computer. And the state of the art is 50 to 100 qubits. So we're several years away. We don't have to do this now, but at the same time, we should be prepared. So, uh, so I don't think we need to do anything in the next six to 12 months. Uh, I don't think we'll have, uh, I might be wrong, but we could have, uh, I don't think we're gonna see that big leap in quantum computing uh, anytime soon. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think we should be ready to make that transition. And we'll, for for us at Hedera, and I think the, the internet uh, in general, I think we should be watchful of the standardization process. We should prepare our systems to uh, to be ready for that transition. And in a lot of ways, uh, in a lot of ways, we 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 can do that. For example, uh, it's. Uh, if if your system relies on TLS communication channels uh, to secure communication between nodes, which Hedera does, although it doesn't impact our, we don't rely on it for security, but we still use TLS. It's a matter of switching the TLS library to one that's using a post quantum secure uh, key exchange mechanism. Uh, as far as digital signatures go, uh, it is a f it is a s relatively straightforward switch to uh, to supporting wallets that use post quantum secure signature schemes. Um, and, and, and we're certainly ready to make that step uh, on our end. Uh, but as I said, I don't think we need to do that in the next uh, t 12 months or maybe perhaps even in the next one decade. Yeah. Got it. And Rohit, as other, you know, parts of the ecosystem start to think about it, it sounds like, you know, you would recommend a measured approach, sort of watch it and, um, and continue to, you know, to monitor and think about how they yeah. incorporate this over the, their product roadmap. Exactly. Yeah, we should all be ready to make <laughs> to transition. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, Rohit, thank you so much for sharing with us. Um, this was very valuable, and we appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this was uh, fun to talk about. Thank you for having me. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye.